Thanks, Mira. And uh, to all the alumni, welcome home. So I chose this case uh, in particular because I thought it was very fitting uh, in light of this year's steward awardee, Dr. Von Daimling. So let's jump into the case. So this is a 79-year-old woman with a right breast mass. The tumor was excised and it showed uh, multiple solid circumscribed nodules that infiltrate around normal breast ducts forming a jigsaw-like pattern. The tumor nodules also infiltrate into the adjacent adipose tissue as seen here. And on high power, all of the nodules show a fibrovascular core that's lined by a double layer of epithelium imparting a papillary appearance. The epithelium consists of columnar cells with abundant pink cytoplasm, intermediate sized bland nuclei with small nucleoli and very little mitotic activity. And what is very striking about this particular tumor is the fact that the nuclei seem to be apically located away from the basement membrane, uh, imparting the appearance of reverse nuclear polarization. So immunohistochemistry was performed and it showed that this tumor expressed low molecular weight cytokeratin-7, high molecular weight cytokeratin-5-6, and lacked P63 myoepithelial staining consistent with an invasive carcinoma. This tumor also lacked ER expression along with negative PR, HER2, and androgen receptor. And the tumor also showed focal GCTFP15 and more extensive mammoglobin staining consistent with a breast primary. E. cadherin highlights the lateral membranes with absent apical and uh, basal staining, uh, suggesting that the epithelium is indeed polarized. And MUC1, which highlights the apical membrane, confirms that the nuclei are indeed located in the apex of the cells. So based on the unusual histologic and immunophenotypic findings, we diagnosed this tumor as solid papillary carcinoma with reverse polarity. So only 37 examples of this unusual lesion have been described in the literature, mostly as case reports and small case series. And the diagnostic terminology used to describe these lesions have evolved over time. It was actually first described by Eusebian colleagues in 2003 as breast tumor resembling the tall cell variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma. Jumped to 2012, Masood and colleagues suggested changing that term to tall cell variant of papillary breast carcinoma. And then now, this year, Foschini and colleagues suggest a third version, solid papillary breast carcinomas resembling the tall cell variant of papillary thyroid neoplasms. But to date, there has been no evidence of an association with thyroid carcinomas in these lesions. In fact, there has been no evidence of TTF1 and thyroglobulin immunoexpression in these tumors. Also, RET rearrangements and BRAF exon 15 mutations, which are common in thyroid carcinomas, have not been reported in these tumors. So because of the lack of any association with thyroid carcinomas, we prefer using the term solid papillary carcinoma with reverse polarity because it describes its unique histologic features along with the very interesting novel discovery of IDH mutations that result in its unique phenotype. If we look at the cumulative clinical data of the 37 uh, published uh, tumors in the literature, uh, the tumors seem to affect postmenopausal women with a median age of 63 years. Among the patients who did have lymph node sampling, only two of them had no positive disease. And among the 28 patients who had clinical follow-up data, 26 of them had no evidence of disease with a mean follow-up of 30 months. And only two patients recurred at 32 and 60 months after initial presentation. So while there is very limited clinical data, 
this information, along with the very bland morphology of the tumor, suggests that patients with solid papillary carcinoma with reverse polarity have uh, been uh, um, indolent clinical course. Because of the unique histology of these lesions, we were able to collect 13 such examples from our files as well as the consultation files of Dr. Stuart Schnitt, who used to be at Beth Israel uh, Deaconess Medical Center in Boston, but now is at, at Brigham and Women's Hospital. And the tumors all have an unusual phen immunophenotype. They are positive for pancytokeratin A1, uh, A1, A1, three. They express both um, high molecular weight cytokeratins 5, 6, and 34 beta E12, as well as low molecular weight cytokeratin 7. And they all consistently lack myoepithelial markers such as P63, smooth muscle myosin heavy chain, and calponin, confirming the invasive nature of these lesions. Approximately 60% of these tumors lack ER expression, and among the remaining 40%, expression is limited to less than 10% of the tumor cells. They've been consistently negative for HER2, and most of the tumors have stained at least focally for GCDFP15, as well as mammoglobin, uh, consistent with the fact that these are breast primary lesions, and although not shown here on this table, uh, all of the tumors have been consistently negative for TTF1 and thyroglobulin immunoexpression. So in summary, uh, solid papillary carcinomas with reverse polarity are invasive, often triple negative breast carcinomas. We subjected tumor DNA from 13 of these lesions to sequencing, two of which were subjected to whole exome sequencing Another two were subjected to MSK Impact, which is our next generation sequencing platform uh, that targets all exons and selected introns of 410 genes. And for six tumors in which there was insufficient DNA for whole exome and impact sequencing, we subjected them to snapshot genotyping, which is a uh, multiplex PCR-based um, assay that targets uh, hotspot mutations in 22 key cancer genes. And finally, in three cases in which there was very limited tissue availability, we subjected them to Sanger sequencing of the IDH2, R140, and R172, and uh, PIK3CA, E542, 545, and H1047 hotspot residues. And what we found was that 77% of solid papillary carcinomas with reverse polarity harbor IDH2 R172 hotspot mutations. So this is the same genetic aberration that we've seen in gliomas, acute myeloid leukemias, chondrosarcomas, intrahepatic cholangiocarcinomas. Also, 85% of these lesions harbor mutations affecting PI3 kinase AKT mTOR pathway canonical genes. And most of the tumors actually harbor a, a PIK3CA uh, H1047R hotspot mutation. Another two showed hotspot mutations in PIK3CA uh, involving different codons. And another two demonstrated PIK3R1 frame shift mutations. Of interest here is that three of our tumors were negative for IDH2 mutation, but one of them harbored a TET2 truncating mutation. If we look at the TCGA data in breast cancers, we see that IDH mutations play very little role in breast cancer pathogenesis. In fact, among 816 samples of invasive mammary carcinomas, only one tumor harbored an IDH2 missense mutation involving a different codon than what we've seen in our tumors. And even though IDH mutations have been described in various tumor types, exactly how it causes human cancers remains uncertain. What we do know is that IDH mutations result in gain of function, uh, enzymatic activity, uh, resulting in NADPH dependent reduction of alpha ketoglutarate to 2-HG, 
increased 2-HG then inhibits alpha ketoglutarate dependent dioxygenases, leading to genome-wide histone and DNA hypermethylation. Increased 2-HG levels also inhibit TET2 catalytic activity, resulting in attenuation of TET2-dependent demethylation of DNA. So both uh, IDH and TET2 mutations result in similar epigenetic consequences, hypermethylation. Um, and hypermethylation has been shown to block cell differentiation as well as cell survival. So we sought to define whether our samples show DNA and histone hypermethylation, and we subjected tumor DNA from six uh, IDH2 mutant and one IDH2 wild type but TET2 mutant solid papillary carcinoma with reverse polarity, as well as two invasive ductal uh, carcinomas that were IDH uh, wild type. And as you can see here, these are the CPG islands, and these are the tumor samples. And uh, based on epigenetic profiling using the EPIC array, we see global DNA hypermethylation indicated by the sea of blue here compared to the IDH wild type invasive ductal carcinomas. We also saw that in IDH2 mutant solid papillary carcinomas with reverse polarity, there is increased H3K27 trimethylation compared to IDH2 wild type ER positive HER2 negative invasive ductal carcinomas, as well as uh, IDH wild type ER negative HER2 negative invasive ductal carcinomas. We also demonstrated that IDH2 mutations uh, result in the accumulation of 2-HG oncometabolite in solid papillary carcinoma with reverse polarity. Here is one such example of an IDH2 mutant tumor that shows increased 2-HG levels compared to non-detectable levels in uh, IDH wild type invasive ductal carcinomas. And using an MCF10A model system, which consists of benign uh, breast epithelial cells um, that includes MCF10A parental uh, cells as well as MCF10A uh, cells that uh, harbors a stable knock-in of the PIK3CA H1047R mutation, we show that forced expression of mutant IDH2 results in increased neomorphic activity in lysates as well as media compared to vector and IDH2 wild type. And this is true regardless of the presence of a PIK3CA mutation. IDH2 and PIK3CA mutations together also confer growth and architectural complexity um, in MCF10A cells using a 3D model system. Here we see that forced expression of mutant IDH2 results in proliferation and increased acinar size compared to vector and IDH wild type. In fact, what is notable here is that uh, forced expression of mutant IDH2 in the MCF10A cells harboring knock the PIK3CA mutation knock-in uh, shows anastomosing cell nests. And finally, to confirm what we do see histologically under the microscope, we also see IDH2 and PIK3CA mutations that result in reverse nuclear polarization in the 3D assay. So here we have forced expression of IDH2 that leads to uh, expression of uh, E. cadherin staining only the lateral membranes. An apical Golgi marker highlighted in green is now located at the base, push, pushing the nucleus towards the apex, confirming uh, reverse nuclear polarization. And this is more pronounced in the MCF10A cells that harbor the um, PIK3CA mutation. So based on these results, IDH2 and PIK3CA likely constitute drivers of solid papillary carcinomas with reverse polarity, and they likely um, result or 
they are likely sufficient for, but not required for this unusual reverse uh, nuclear polarization phenotype. So based on the overall findings, um, solid papillary carcinoma with reverse polarity is indeed a distinct clinical pathologic entity. These are defined by IDH2 hotspot or TET2 mutations along with mutations affecting the PI3 kinase pathway canonical genes. This is also the first time in which IDH mutations have been associated with a particular phenotype. This has not been seen in other IDH mutant tumors in other organ systems. Furthermore, detection of IDH2 mutation may serve as a robust ancillary diagnostic marker of these lesions. And while many of the patients with this particular uh, breast cancer subtype follow a, a benign clinical course, genetic profiling in the few patients that may go on to have progressive disease may benefit from enrollment in clinical trials um, using IDH inhibitors. So I'd like to thank my many, many collaborators um, from our institution here as well as um, other institutions elsewhere, particularly Dr. Von Dynley who contributed to the 2HG analysis for this particular study. And with that, I am happy to take any questions or comments.